The Steel Tube Institute is the leading technical resource in North America for steel tube products, providing information to help you utilize hollow structural sections on your projects. We engage with experts to develop the tools and resources you need to bring your project to life. STI's website contains a multitude of resources, including design tools, articles, and webinars to assist professionals in designing and specifying HSS. In this video, we will walk you through the use of STI's HSS Connects program. By checking local limit states, this tool helps designers ensure that the HSS wall thicknesses they specify will be adequate at connections. This tool is compliant with current AISC 360 specifications. To start using HSS Connects, first create a free account at the Steel Tube Institute's website. And once you're on the website page, log into the account that you've created. After you've logged in, you'll see HSS Connects in the drop down menu under My Account. This will take you to the HSS Connects Tool landing page and then we need to click on HSS Connects Tool to start the program. HSS Connects will help you ensure that your HSS wall thickness works for the connections that frame into it, but it does not design the entire connection. You will need to finish your design outside of HSS Connects. This version of HSS Connects is based on AISC 36016 specification and the 15th edition manual, with the exception that QSIV F is based on the 36022 specification section K1.3, and the end distance reduction is based on 36022 specification section K1.4. For the purpose of demonstrating this tool today, we will be looking at a connection of a beam with a moment reaction to an HSS column using flange plates. You can see that example on the right. We will start out by selecting our code, LRFD, and our measurement system to be US customary. Our example will be a plate to HSS connection type. But I do want to point out that if you have an HSS to HSS connection type, the images and types of connections available to you will change on the screen. So if you're on plate to HSS and you don't see your connection, try clicking on HSS to HSS. On the plate to HSS category, our shape is a rectangular HSS. Our column, as you see on the right, is a 8 by 8 by 3 8 The flange plates are equivalent to a transverse plate loading on our column. The moment will be taken out in a tension and compression couple. And then the type of transverse plate that we have is a T-type 90 degree connection. And now we can continue to input our parameters. We need to expand each of these sections and complete the information requested therein. Our material type in our example is A500 grade C. If you had A1085, that material type is already loaded. If you have a custom material type or if you're still utilizing A500 grade B, you could select custom and put in the strengths for A500 grade B or any material that you wish. Our section is the HSS 8 by 8 by 3 8 We'll scroll down through all the list of sections that are available here until we find that section and select it. And then we'll look at the orientation. This section only applies if you have a rectangular column or a rectangular cord. We have a square one, so we could select either one of these. If you had a round HSS, this would not matter either. If you have a rectangular HSS, orientation vertical simply means that you're connecting your plate to the short or the narrow face of your HSS. Orientation horizontal means that you're connecting your plate to the long face of the HSS. Once we filled in all the information in a section, we get a green check mark that that section is complete. So moving now into the cord stress interaction parameter, Q sub F. This is a parameter specific to HSS and what it measures is the level of utilization of your cord member. If your cord member is heavily utilized, then you will apply a reduction factor to your connection capacity. We are going to be loading our cord with 156 kips in compression. So I'll type that in and I'm using a negative sign because up here it tells me that compression is negative. I already know that this is a light utilization, which will result in a Q sub F with no reduction. We'll take a look at that in the results. 
This section is now complete. And now moving on to our plate section. Our plate is a seven inch by four inch by three eighths inch A3, A36 plate. Our material A36 is selected. We also have A572-50 or a custom material. Our strengths have been populated. We just need to input the width and thickness of our plate. The short direction of the plate is the width on our cord, that's four inches. And the thickness of our plate is 3 eighths of an inch. And now that section is complete as well. Our next section is to input the required strength or the demand on our connection. This is the axial load on the transverse plate, not the axial load on the column. So our moment of 11 kip feet is taken out by a six inch depth of beam. In our case, this is an HSS beam, but this example would work equally well for a wide flange beam. So our flange force will be 11 kip feet divided by six inches is 22 kips. We'll have one negative and one positive axial force. I will be entering the positive one for this example. The last section is the end of member. In this section, we're determining if we need to take an end distance reduction. The program will calculate based on our HSS sizes what the minimum end distance is. In our case, it's 5.66 inches. We are not less than 5.66 inches from the end of the member. We do not need to apply an end distance reduction. And now that section is complete as well. Now we'll take a look at the results. We can first take a look at the picture and make sure that our loads are input and everything looks as we expect it to, which it does match our example. We can see right off the bat whether or not our wall of our HSS is okay. In our case, it is. The load, the demand is 22 kips and the governing capacity is 27.4 kips for an interaction of 0.8. So we are all good there. Now what the program has done is it has taken a look at all the limit states that apply to this connection type, this transverse plate. If you look over here on the bottom, you'll see five of those limit states listed out. We determined those limit states by taking a look at STI's limit state table and pulling out the equations on the table for this connection type. We also went through all of the equations to get to the results in HSS Connects and we'll take a look at those results here. By expanding the full output report, we will get the information that we input repeated back to us, our loading and our capacity and our interaction, the cord data, the plate data. We've also checked the limits of applicability and we have our first output here is that Q sub F equals one. The load that we put on the cord ended up with a utilization factor of 0.3, which was light enough that our Q sub F did not reduce the capacity of our connection. If you take a look over here on the right, I plugged in, if our utilization factor was 0.99, which is heavily loaded, we would have had a reduction of 50% on the capacity of that connection, and it would have been less than our demand. So that Q sub F is definitely something that you want to keep your eyes on. The limit state summary is given down here with plastification, local yielding of plate, HSS shear yielding or punching, local yielding of HSS sidewalls, and local crippling of HSS sidewalls. I'm just going to flip through those limit states here on the right as well. We worked through those equations and arrived at the same values. Once you're finished, you can open your output report in a new tab to print that. If your output shows that the HSS section is inadequate at the connection, it is recommended to increase the HSS wall thickness rather than attempt to reinforce it down the line during fabrication. We hope this overview of HSS Connects has been helpful. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to the member producers who make these resources possible. To access this program, visit our website at steeltubeinstitute.org.